Hey everybody, I'm Joey. I'm Pete, you're watching Backpacker Brothers. And today we're gonna to talk to you about backpacking gear upgrades for the 2018 season that we're making. get started a little note on backpacking gear it's an iterative process it's always changing you're always getting new gear getting little tweaks maybe you buy a piece of gear and you learn a bit about it something you don't like and you want to fix it so that's really what these things are that we're going to go over today we've gone on our first overnight trip a few things that we remembered we weren't quite liking about our gear setup we decided we wanted to dial in a little bit more so today we're going to be going through some of those changes that we're making this season in 2018 heading into our longer trips. So one of the most important aspects with backpacking gear is going to be weight. So a lot of the upgrades that we're making here have to do with getting our pack weights down. Typically to get something that is um, going to be both light and still durable and really good at doing its job, you're going to have to spend a little more. So um, you know, whereas we've done uh, some videos now on cheap backpacking gear um, you know some of these things are not exactly going to be cheap but we have always found that you know that money is almost always well spent a lot of the upgrades we're making are going to bring the pack weight down um, and they're going to be things that are just going to work better for us all right everybody one upgrade that i'm making this year isn't a complete gear replacement but it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time and that's my sleeping system or my sleeping bag so what I've used for years is right here this is the REI flash men's regular sleeping bag and it's actually not available anymore but at the time it was about $230 if I remember correctly and this has been a solid sleeping bag right I've had it since the beginning I've used it on all my trips when I was camping in tents and now I use it in my hammock as well so it was really our last trip that I was in the hammock and I wanted to spread out and I couldn't so it was just one of those little things that I've always kind of wanted to replace this and I wanted to also go lighter right because we have some bigger trips coming up I was trying to shave weight off but I also wanted to do this in a budget friendly way so what I came up with was this right here it's called the Aegis Max Ultralight Sleeping Bag it's almost a quilt and it's $75 on Amazon and there's other reviews of this out there I did my research and this really is a solid option so this way is one pound whereas this pay weighs one pound 12 ounces so i'm saving um, some weight right there as well and this is rated to 30 degrees too and a lot of people say maybe you should take it into the 40s if you're a warm sleeper like me maybe the 30s so i'm thinking this is going to be a great um, replacement for those warmer months and if i get into october and november here in minnesota i'm still going to keep my rei flash it's been solid and it'll probably get me into those colder temperatures but overall you can also see the size difference is really significant. So this season, that major goal of lightening the load, dialing in our gear and just getting our packs smaller, it makes a big difference and that's really what I'm trying to accomplish with this. So along those same lines, I am also replacing my sleeping bag. So just like with Pete, um, I have been using a sleeping bag as sort of a top quilt in my hammock. Um, and then of course I'll use it as usual if we go tent camping like we did in Teddy Roosevelt just this past fall. Um, so I have an REI sleeping bag similar to Pete's here, although mine is all synthetic fill. Pete's is actually a blend. So what I'm getting is a hammock gear burrow 20. So it's very similar to what I've got right here. This is the hammock gear incubator 20. So both of these quilts uh, can insulate you down pretty comfortably into the 20s. This is not way smaller than something like Pete's sleeping bag, um, but this is not compressed down, so you can really, you know, crush this down quite a bit as well. These are both about $270, the under quilt and the top quilt, but I really can't say enough great things. It's customizable. You can get a long, a medium, a short length. You can get standard width or wide. You can add however many ounces of overfill you would like. So for example, if you want it to get a little warmer, you can do that. You can pick the fabrics. The top quilt that will go down to 20 degrees is going to be about an entire pound lighter 
than my REI synthetic sleeping bag which goes down to 25 degrees so not only can it insulate a few degrees warmer but it's also a whole pound lighter so that's that's huge especially um, when we've already done things over the years of lightening our packs because hammock gear quilts are custom made to order um, i still don't have it yet we will be uh, showing that to you guys on our next trip which is coming up really soon here So one upgrade that I'm making isn't really about weight savings necessarily, it's more about an efficiency thing. To kind of give you a baseline as far as how did Joe and I carry our water on the trail, we've pretty much always done two water bottles. We never really use Nalgene's because those are heavy, so we'd recommend for you to just go straight into water bottles. Joe experimented with a bladder and a hose at one point, and I never did that. So we both right now, we always have water bottles on each side, right? So you pick them up at a gas station, something like that. One little hack that I learned of that um, inspired me to buy the smart water bottles, a liter on each side, is you get them with this sports cap, right? And you can actually use this to filter your water filter out or back flush it. The one that I've always used is the Sawyer Mini. And that came with this syringe, which lets you backwash the Sawyer Mini and clean it out. But now I don't necessarily need to take this. And now I can use the smart water bottle to do that. So it's my drinking water here. And it also serves that purpose. So it's a dual purpose item, something you're always looking for when you're backpacking. So another realization that I came to with my water system was how I collected water at water sources, right? And how efficient I could be doing that. So we've always used these Sawyer bags, right? And they're great. but. What gets kind of annoying about them is unless you have running water, if you're using a water source that is stagnant or slow moving, sometimes these are really hard to collect water with, right? Because you have this small nozzle and a lot of times you blow it up like that to get it ready and you have to try to dip it underneath the water. And I just thought there's got to be a better way to do this and to simplify things. So what I came up with was this, the Knock Outdoors water bladder. It's two liters. Um, I haven't field tested it yet, but it's supposed to be very durable, right? And it's kind of a new design. And the Sawyer Mini and many other water filters are supposed to screw right onto the end. And what I really loved about it, what I was looking for is when you take this top off, this entire top part opens up so you can scoop it underneath the water source and gather the water efficiently and quickly. And that's the main thing I wanted. It might not sound like a lot, but when you're up north and it's like 40 degrees out and your fingers are just freezing off, it really makes a difference to get in that water source and get out quickly. So another upgrade that I'm making is my knife. Now I've had this Remington Sportsman series here for a few years now, and it's something like a $30 knife. Um, it is a folder and you know, it's, it's served me well for a pretty long time. So there's nothing really wrong with it, but it's not super lightweight. And you know, as you can see here, I mean, this finish on the handle here has just totally been coming off and um, the knife doesn't really flip open very easily you really have to kind of push it manually um, and the blade is dulled over time so in light of wanting to go with something lighter weight after lots of searching and comparing different knives out there I ended up going with this this is the Boker Urban Trapper so this knife is really lightweight it's like 1.6 ounces so um, it's almost weird how light it feels in the hand, but it's not going to compromise on quality because uh, you know the, the handle here is made of titanium, the grips are a high grade composite material, and then the blade itself is VG10 steel, which is a high grade stainless steel that boasts the same kind of hardness as a carbon steel. So it's going to be really sharp and really hard. Um, but it's also going to be very corrosion resistant. Just sort of handling it and using it for a couple of little things, I have really enjoyed this knife a lot already. So one of the main goals of this channel is that we want us all to learn together. So Joe and I are not experts. We've been backpacking for a couple of years, but we don't claim to be experts in everything about backpacking and we haven't experienced everything. So one of the things that I'm thinking about doing this season is replacing my footwear. And this will be the first time that I'll be replacing footwear because I think maybe I've worn it out, but I'm just not sure. So these are the Vasque Mindbender Trail Runners. They've been solid for me, great footwear. 
These replaced some hiking boots for me and I'm never gonna go back to hiking boots. I'll always be a trail runner guy, I think. So these have been up north. They've been to Olympic National Park, Yosemite, lots of rugged terrain. And some of the first trips this year, I kind of got to a point where I felt, if I really thought about it, I don't think I was getting the support I used to. The tread was kind of beat up, still working, but getting a few little tears, but I just felt side to side, maybe I wasn't getting the support that I did when I first wore them. So I'd say these have about 500 miles on them. And as I looked at advice online, like everybody does, people were saying 500 miles, replace them. Other people were saying 1,000 miles, that's when you need to replace them. So this is really an area where I'm learning and I'm trying to make a decision. So if you have any advice about when do you replace your footwear, I'd love to see that down in the comments below. But I'm really thinking before our first trip this year, that's a big multi-day trip, I'm probably gonna replace these, so stay tuned for that. And just a quick note about footwear in general, uh, we did write a post about how to choose the best hiking footwear and we also mentioned what we both use in there. Uh, we'll link to that down below. But yeah, definitely check that out if you know, you're a beginner or if you're new to getting some new hiking footwear, um, that should help you out. So moving on from there, another thing that I'm going to upgrade here is my light source. So I've been using this Energizer headlamp for a number of years now, pretty much since the beginning. And uh, you know, I think I got this from like the basement in our parents' house or something like that. And you know, it's been fine, but the main problem with this thing is that when I store this in my pack, I literally have to take the back off and take out the batteries when I'm not using it because the switch on the top here always ends up somehow just shifting around in the pack and getting turned on and then I'm hiking for a whole day and this thing's just draining the batteries and so that's like just really been annoying right the other thing about it is it's not really the lightest weight headlamp out there um, you know it's definitely not heavy but there are lighter weight options out there that's what this is this is the black diamond iota it's a pretty minimalist style headlamp um, but you know it's got two brightness settings to it um, so you can turn it on with a button here there's no way this is getting activated in the pack which is great um, and then you know the brightness here on the side it's sort of a touch button which is kind of cool and then uh, the other thing that is really great about this is it's actually a USB charging battery so what I really like about that is that it allows me to start transitioning all of my electronics to USB charge and that brings me to this upgrade here this is the power add battery here it's like 12,000 milliamp hours so just to give you an idea of what that actually means this can charge my iPhone 8 six times in a row from 0% up to 100%. I like that a lot better than lugging around a bunch of extra batteries because the other problem with that is, you know, who knows how much charge is left on a battery like that, right? Uh, this takes triple A's. I always end up bringing a lot more extra batteries than I probably need, so really, I'm gonna be saving a lot of weight. Another quick upgrade, this one is a smaller one, but I've been carrying around this emergency blanket here for a number of years now. This is sort of like a bivy style, so you can actually pull it around an entire sleeping bag. I've used it like one time. We were really new to backpacking still, and so I just wasn't really prepared for the cold temperatures, so I did pull it over my sleeping bag. Um, but that said, you know, it's just always been one of those sort of, you know, kind of bulky, annoying things to shove in the pack. Instead, I just picked up one of these for like you know five dollars at the store you can get them at Walmart you can get them on Amazon but this is just your typical emergency blanket and so you know the thing is it's just it's smaller it's lighter so you know compare this when it's kind of folded up I can just put a rubber band around it to you know this big thing going in the pack so this is actually in terms of cost a downgrade if you will meaning that this is only like five bucks this was more than that uh, but I'm considering this an upgrade because it's a lighter weight and it's still gonna be just as useful for when I actually need it if I ever do so the final thing I'll mention in terms of upgrades um, it's not really a upgrade in terms of like replacing or adding any type of gear it's about making a decision to stop 
using a certain piece of gear, at least for the time being, in order to get my pack weight a little bit more down. So I've done a video on something called dry baking and it is totally awesome and I still recommend trying that. Um, but I'm actually gonna take a little break from it uh, for a little while and basically all that's gonna do for me is make me not have to take this pan along with me. I've never really found a good way to nest this inside my cook kit, so that's something I am going to work on doing in the future as well. But, you know, for now, I really want to experiment with making the pack much, much lighter. And so, you know, taking this out is gonna give me, you know, a couple of ounces less. And so we'll see how it goes.